first video I ever made, Why There Is Life on Other Planets, probably, took a strong stand on the likely existence of life on other planets, and I stand by that video. But a far more interesting question is, is there complex life in the universe outside of Earth? And even more interesting is, is there intelligent life in the universe outside of our planet? This is the first of what I think is probably going to be three videos on the topic of why intelligence is probably quite rare in the universe. And I have to admit, I'm not thrilled with that conclusion because who isn't incredibly curious about what other intelligent species would be like? I've spent a lot of time thinking about the idea of other intelligences and what they'd be like and whether they would be very similar to us or very different. And for most of my life, I was convinced by the sheer numbers, the myriad of galaxies, the unimaginable number of stars in those galaxies. And after the investigations of exoplanets beginning in the 1990s, we see that there are planets around stars and some stars have many planets around them. Amazingly, with certain telescopes, we are now able to see protoplanetary disks in our galaxy. I made a video about these, they're incredibly cool. That was first theorized about the origins of our own solar system. Is there really anything so special about Earth that would make it the only place in the universe where intelligent life developed? This question is at the core of the field of astrobiology, the study of life or possible life in the universe. It's a large topic and today I just want to focus on one thing and two others in subsequent videos. These are considerations that have made me question my lifelong conviction of the existence and prevalence of intelligent life elsewhere in the universe. Let's talk about the time course for the development of life on Earth. In my previous video, I argued that the speed of the development of simple life, microbial life somewhat like bacteria or archaea or their predecessors, suggested the ubiquity of life on suitable planets. We had life on Earth by 3.8 billion years ago, or maybe even earlier. It can be argued that as soon as the Earth cooled enough to make the existence of life possible, simple forms of life developed. If we look at the 4.5 billion year history of our planet, simple life formed quickly. But intelligent life, like human beings, took the full four and a half billion years to develop. If you want to argue for the intelligence of the ancestors of humans or elephants or dolphins or even cephalopods, the numbers change negligibly because all these creatures are recent in comparison to the vast age of the earth. As far as we can tell, it took two and a half billion years to get the first eukaryotic cells. These are the cells of which all complex life is composed. They have a nucleus surrounded by a nuclear membrane and membrane-bound organelles like mitochondria and in plants, chloroplasts. And they have access to thousands of times the energy per gene of bacteria or archaea. So two and a half billion years to get the cells that are the building blocks of all complex life. And it took three billion years to get a fungus, and at least three and a half billion years to get algae. And the earliest land plants evolved only after four billion years of Earth history. Here's the point. Studies of stars like our sun show that within a billion years or so from now, solar luminosity will increase, heating the Earth and evaporating the oceans. A few hundred million years before that, let's call it 600 million years from now, carbon dioxide levels will be falling and increasingly plants will be struggling to survive. And the idea remains the same even if these numbers are off by a billion years. My point is not that the Earth is headed for catastrophe. 
I'm fully expecting that if human beings are still around then, we will have developed a strategy. The technology to manage or engineer the sun, or the position of Earth. Or we will have left the planet for someplace more hospitable. But in the whole sweep of Earth's long history, the planet will have had roughly five or five and a half billion years to reach the end of its capacity to sustain intelligent life. And it took four and a half billion of those five or five and a half billion to get intelligent life. Looked at this way, we barely made it. It took almost all of the available time almost all the duration of Earth's intelligent life-bearing capacity to produce intelligent life. If we use five and a quarter billion years as the endpoint of Earth's ability to sustain complex life, intelligent life evolved here very, very late. We came into existence with only 13% of the time remaining until Earth can no longer harbor intelligent life. That's not encouraging for the idea that intelligent life is easy or fast to develop. Okay, disclaimers. I'm not saying these numbers are exact, nor am I ruling out that there might be life around longer lived stars like red dwarfs where the time course might be different. Nor am I explicitly or necessarily rejecting or excluding the possibility of some radically different form of life about which we know nothing and which bears little resemblance to life on Earth. I am just saying that we have one data point for the development of life. And that one data point supports the idea that simple forms of life like bacteria may be common in the universe. But that one data point does not support the idea that the evolution of intelligent life is easy. I wish we had more data points. One day we will. Still, it's a big universe out there with quintillions of planets in it. The way things unfolded here on our planet doesn't suggest that there are no intelligent species elsewhere in the universe, but it may point in the direction that intelligent life takes a long time to develop and that it may be rare, which is not what I pictured growing up watching Star Trek. I hate having to give that up. I really wanted there to be a lot of fascinating aliens. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Like and subscribe and all that. And I hope you'll enjoy the next two installments of the regrettable obstacles to intelligent life in the universe.